If you've just gotten your Bofang radio and all those buttons and sounds don't make sense, or if that annoying voice does not help at all, or maybe your computer crashed and you need to program repeaters for your vacation, but you've got to do it without Chirp. Either way, this video is going to help you out. Welcome to Bofang Programming for Beginners. So, the first thing I want to say is, even though I'm using a UV5RTP in this video, the principle applies to about 90% of Bofang radios, so chances are your radio is configured the same way and this menu method will work. So this is part one, and the first thing we're going to learn about is what the buttons do on the radio. So let's turn it on. I've only disconnected the antenna to make sure we don't receive any signals while I'm trying to do this. So this is your on and off switch and volume quite obvious. This orange button is your VFO and memory switch. How to determine this is to push the VFO button. If there are numbers next to your frequency, you can see over here, you're in memory mode and you can scroll through pre-programmed memories which I'll show you how to do in a minute. If there are no numbers, you're in VFO mode and you can type in whatever frequency you want using the keypad. The next button is the AB button. This button's rather simple. It just switches, you can see the arrow, between the top and bottom frequency. The band button only works when in VFO mode and switches between the VHF and UHF bands as you can see happening. So over on the side you have speaker and microphone. And this side is a little more complicated. You have your push to talk button. And here you have your MON or monitor button. When you briefly push it, a flashlight comes on. When you push it again, the flashlight flashes. And when you push it again, the flashlight turns off. To monitor, you hold it. And you can see, I begin receiving. It temporarily opens the squelch for as long as the button is depressed. If I let go, squelch kicks back in and I stop receiving. The call button, when pushed once, turns on the FM radio, and when held, activates the alarm. So that's what that does. Keypad is pretty simple. You have your menu, up and down arrows, exit, and you have your keypad with different blue letters and abbreviations on them, which I'm about to explain their purpose and how to use them right now in part two. Okay, so step two is how to get through and change settings in your Bofang's menu. So to access the menu, you simply push the menu button. Once inside the menu, there's two ways to select what menu setting you'd like. Step one is to use the up or down arrows to change through your menu options. Step two is to directly type in the menu option you'd like, for example, 25 or set uh, 14 so you can see it changing there now on your Bofang there are blue letters or abbreviations next to your numbers if you're wondering how to use those here's what you do you push menu and then you push which one you'd like to use say we're wanting to change our timeout timer we push menu then we push 9 or TOT. It takes us to menu number 9. So all these blue letters are are menu settings, menu uh, submenus, I guess I could call them. And there are, I think, 32, but the first 10 are shown on the number keys. So here's timeout timer. Now, the two things I'm going to teach you right now, and you can figure the rest out yourself with what I teach you, is how to change menu settings, and I'm going to show you a couple of the more useful menu settings to change. So, let's start by going to menu 7, which is TDR, or dual reception. Now, you may be wondering how to change this on or off. 
maybe pushing the up and down arrows, but then you are just changing your menu settings. Uh, maybe pushing a button. No, that's not working either. That's also changing submenus. So what you need to do is once you're in the menu, and I'll break this down for you again right from scratch, push menu, go navigate to the setting you'd like to change, then push menu again, and you can see the arrow drop down. Now I can select what I'd like, on, off, or in some cases numbers, offsets, PL tones, etc. Once I've selected what setting I like, I push menu again to save it, and the arrow goes back up. If you do not do this, it will not save your changes. So, TDR allows for reception of both the top and the bottom frequencies. When you buy your radio, usually it is off. There is no S over here, you do need to note that. And if I had the antenna in, I would only receive the frequency that my arrow was on. But if I go into menu and change this setting to on, now that S is there, and I'm listening to the top and bottom, so I can listen to two conversations at once, or monitor two repeaters at the same time, whatever you'd like to do. So that's very useful. Another useful menu setting is the timeout timer, which we visited earlier. Uh, by pushing the down arrow, I'm sorry, the menu button, you can then drop down into the submenu and use the up and down arrows to change how many seconds you're allowed to talk. So if you're long-winded, you can definitely adjust that for more time. Now here's another very important one, and I cannot remember what menu number it is off the top of my mind. Um, I'll attempt to find it rather quickly for you, so you don't have to sit here and watch me scroll through memories for a long time. Here it is, number 23, BCL, that's Busy Channel Lockout. You definitely want this off, except for your weather and police stations. What busy channel lockout is, is it makes the receiver in the radio disengage the transmitter. And what I mean by that, let's say I'm talking on a repeater, and it's receiving a signal, and I accidentally push the PTT button. It will not let me transmit because it is receiving. Or let's say on the weather station, if I push this button, it won't let me transmit because it's receiving. So you cannot interrupt with the busy channel lockout as the name suggests so I I hope that makes sense and helps you out a little bit those are three of the more important memory channel I'm sorry menu channels so there's also the step which changes your kilohertz that's menu setting number one squelch menu number zero also important and those are labeled in blue letters on the keypad. So now I'm going to show you how to use that principle we just learned to program memory channels into your radio manually without a computer. Here we go, welcome to part three. So first thing you need to do is make sure you're on the VFO, not the memory readout. If your voice is turned on on the radio, it will tell you which one you're on just by pushing the VFO MR button. It will come out and tell you what you're on. But if you have it turned off like me, the way to identify is by these numbers on the side. If you have the numbers on the side, you're in memory mode. I push it again, you can see the numbers go away. Now we're in VFO. So first thing to do is input your frequency. In this case, I'm going to type 146820, just like that. So now we have the frequency we want. Next, we need to give it a PL tone. And the way to do this is to push menu. Now we're in the menu. And you can push the up and down arrows until you get to the PL tone setting. Or if you know what menu number it is, you can just type it in. So I know it's menu number 13. I can just push 1, 3, and it takes us right to TCTCS, which is PL tone. So once I'm here, I need to push menu again. That'll drop this arrow down to where it says off. I then can push the up and down arrows to get to whatever PL tone I want, or I can manually type it in. See, I can push 1, and then punch in three zeros after it, and now we're at 100 hertz, PL tone. So after I do that, here's the most important step. I need to push menu again. You can see that arrow go back up to the top. That saves the PL tone. If I was just to go and say, change it to 107.2, and then push exit, 
it doesn't save it. Watch, I go back, it's still at 100. It does not save it unless you drop that arrow down, find the tone you want, and then push menu again to save it. So that is very critical. But now that we've got our PL tone, we can push exit and get us back to the frequency. So the next step is to push menu again, and then we're going to type 25. Or you can just scroll until you find something that says shift. Right now our shift is off. We need to push menu to drop us down into the selector mode, and then use the up and down arrows to get to negative offset or positive if you're in a different portion of the band. Remember to push menu to confirm it. From there, we're going to go up one more menu setting to offset. Now, once you push this and get back down, you're just going to manually type in your offset. Here's the catch. You need to put zeros before your number. So allow me to demonstrate. If I just type 600, you see it starts over here. That's going to give me a 600 megahertz offset. I don't want that. What I want is a 0.600 megahertz offset. So you need to type 0, 0, 0, and then put your 600 in. Now it's after the decimal point, which means it's 0.600. Now push menu again to confirm, and exit. Now, the last thing you need to do is adjust your power. And to do that, you can either go into menu and click power, or there's a shortcut, you can just push the pound. If you see right now I'm on medium power and I push pound, it goes to low, high, and it will cycle through. So you can select your power. Let's just say I want medium. Okay, now that the repeater is totally ready to go, all we have to do now is put it into a memory channel. To do this, we push menu, and then you can use your up or down arrows. It's usually menu number 27. Memory channel. So to do this, we push menu again, now we can select what channel we want using the up and down arrows, or we can just type it in. So say I want this to be channel 73. I'm sorry, you have to do it 073. Memory channel 73. Now, there is a catch on this that's not on the other menu modes. When you push menu to confirm it the first time, it will save it, but in order to save all your transmitting powers, etc., you need to push down and up again. So the first time you confirm it, it saves the frequency offset PL tone. Second time it saves the power, etc. So push it twice just to make sure everything gets saved. You can see the menu defaults off after about five seconds. Now watch, if I come into my memory, we have a new channel, 73. And you can see 146820. Now, you may be confused at the plus minus or the S. Let me explain to you what those are real fast. The plus minus is to let you know there's an offset. In memory channels, you cannot change the offset of your repeaters once they're in memory. So it displays a plus and a minus instead of showing you just the one it actually has. The S is a setting I have inside of my radio called dual monitor, which I explained previously and that just allows me to monitor both VFOs at once. So I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, comment and I'll answer um, giving you a button by button sequence to program whatever you're wondering about but that should cover you up and make it easy for you to program repeaters into your memory. But real fast, if you mess up, let me tell you what you need to do. Push menu and one menu setting above memory channel is delete channel. To delete a channel, you just go down, select the channel you desire to delete, and confirm. Now, if we come back, there's no memory channel 73. See, it just jumps from 50 to 86. No memory channel number 73 anymore. So I hope that helps you, and you got some good information. Again, if you have any questions, comment, and I will be sure to get back to you on them. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 73s and God bless until next Sunday.